Hello and welcome back to CIS 165 JavaScript Programming Online. I'm your instructor Victor Campos again. So we're gonna start to work on lesson 4. Uh, you should read chapter 4 in the book where it talks about loops, conditional statements, and other, and other decision-making uh, tools that JavaScript has. So let me show you the end result of what we're going toward and then we will work on our practice example. So I have this uh, uh, project here. This is going to be that we are going to get examples of a particular musician some age of theirs and what band they're on. So we are going to employ arrays here and to build objects from the arrays. Well we've done that before but here's the new part because we're going to use loops uh, to create some new random band members. We're going to rearrange the first name, last name, age, and band of the particular person into a brand new super musician. So watch this. We're also going to talk about activating buttons so that they do something when you click. I'm going to click and I'm going to get these random names. Kurt Wolf is 23 years old from Bratmobile. Pete Pop is 16 years old from No Doubt. So we're taking the first name, last name, age, and band and rearranging them. And every time we click, we get a new one. Courtney Stefani is 24 years old from Ramones. Shirley Cobain is 20 years old from The Stooges. So every time I click, I get a random assortment of those items from the array. So I've created different objects from items of an array. Uh, so that requires a for loop to create multiple objects quickly. And then a little bit of randomness. So that's what we're going toward. I'm going to prepare myself by setting up my new folder for lesson four and copying in as always my basic project starting visual code closing the old project and opening the new one all right so we'll set up some basic things here the title of this project lesson four practice our heading will be random band generator and the information all right so we're ready to go we want to get used to the immediately invoked function expression so we'll open a couple of parentheses define a new function break that apart and we're using strict mode I'm going to create an array for the last name first name, name of the band, and then ages of the band members. So var all last names. That's going to be an array. I'll fill it in in a moment. Then we'll need all first names, all bands, all ages, and because it'll be useful for me later on, I want to define all names len. This will be the length. I can set this one right away. All last names length. So this will give me the number of items in that array and store it in a variable. Finish that. So notice I've been doing the comma for each one of these because I have one var statement and then I complete the statement with the semicolon. So I'll start off with a few last names of musicians. 
let's say Hendrix, Cobain, Ramon, a few first names, Jimmy, Kurt, and Joey. The bands, the Jimmy Hendrix experience, that's a long one. Nirvana and Ramones. All ages is going to be populated with random numbers. Now you might have figured it out by now, but I love random numbers. So we need to develop some form of an algorithm to create random ages to populate the all ages array. So I'll do that on the next block over here. Here's where we're going to use one of our uh, conditional loops. We will use the for loop. So some amount of times, some number of times I have to uh, do something. So the syntax is we have uh, the for loop, some sort of index variable, so we can create a variable right here. Traditionally we use i for index. Set that to zero because I want to start with the first item. Semicolon here. This is the only place really you're going to see semicolons in the middle of a statement before the end of the statement. It's just the way it is. And we have i less than all names len semicolon i plus plus. So here we're saying let's loop. Let's start with the zero with item and keep going until i is less than the total number of names. Total number of names currently is set to 3. And we can just test this very quickly by saying something like console log i. I should see some console output. Right here. So it looped 0, 1, 2. It looped three times. If we had one more item in our last names array, then that changes all names len, and then this runs an additional time. So we have a loop here. What we want to loop is to invent a random number and put that random number in the all ages array. So I'll create a local variable called random ages. That will be math.random. I'm about to create a random number, so I'll use the random number method of the math object. Here we need to figure out what our age range will be. And previously, if I were to simply have done math random times 25, it would give me a value between um, 0 and 25. Now, there is no band member that is 0 years old or 1 years old or 10 years old. I want band members that are between, I don't know, let's say um, 13 years old and 25 years old. Let's say this is the age of when they founded the band. I don't know, we'll just choose some random number, random ages let's say uh, between 13 and 25 years old. So what we need to do is, the trick here is, we're going to have times something, and then we will add to that 13. So think about it. If we had here the value of 25, we could possibly get the um, value of 0. 0 plus 13 will give me 13. So the person will be at least 13 years old. That's uh, looking a little young, actually, so let's do uh, 18. So we'll say the person is at least 18 years old when they were, when they were in the band. So if, they, if the random number is 2, 2 plus 18 is 20. So they were 20 years old. Now, if the random number is 
25, that'll be 25 plus 18, which is, I think, a little bit too old for what I want to do. So I'm going to subtract 18 from 25, which gives me 7. So now the numbers could be between 0 and 7. 0 being a minimum of 18 years old, and 7 being the maximum of 25 years old. So I'm inventing some random numbers, which I then need to, to round, as always. I'm going to then perform the rounding method upon that random number. I'll let it do a straight round up or down, doesn't matter to me at this point. Just a random number, round it up or down, then we add 18 to it. End of statement. What we want to do then is we've got an array called all ages, and we've got a method called push. We're going to add something to the end of the array. Dot push is the method. What we're adding is random ages. So we'll say then, okay, let's take a quick look at that array to see what ages we have randomly generated. All ages. Show me the all ages array. There we go, 23, 20, 22. Every time we refresh, we get a new set of uh, ages between 18 and 25. It's a narrow range, but you see there, random numbers every time. Okay, so we've populated all of our arrays. I next want to create an array for the uh, original band members. So I want Jimi Hendrix from the Jimi Hendrix experience is X years old. I want Kurt Cobain from Nirvana is X years old. I want Joy Ramone from Ramones is X years old. I want those original values as one object together. So this will be our original band member. It's an empty array at the moment and another array called random band member. This will be the mixed up names in a brand new person. So we might get Jimmy Cobain or Joey Hendrix. We'll populate those a little later. I eventually want to display these items on screen. So let me back up actually to our body and create a couple of placeholders here. So this is a random band, band generator, but first I'm going to display the original band members in some div. And then the mixed up band members, so new band members in their own div. These need a unique identifier so that I can populate them. We'll say ID div show original band. And the second one div show new band. So those div placeholders will be so that I can uh, display some results on screen. So I'll create some new variables to store those elements. Yes, I could be using the same var keyword over and over, but I'll just um, create some new ones for these conceptual blocks. EL for element, show original names and that'll be document dot get element by ID we've started to see this and we will see it more on chapter 5 actually and so the div that I'm talking about is div show original band then we want L show new names document dot get element by ID end of statement there and the particular ID that I am talking about is div show new band 
So now I can access those elements in the HTML section via JavaScript. Next I'll create a constructor function so I can create instances of band members. First the original names and then the mixed up names. So one properly constructed function will work well. So function, we'll call this band member. And right here, this is where it's common practice to use capital letters. Band member. This will take a few parameters. So here's our syntax. The parameters that we're taking in this order are last name, comma, first name, comma, age, comma, band. So whenever we create an instance of a band member, we need those four parameters. The properties of this object then are this last name is equal to the last name provided as an argument. This first name is the first name provided to us, and you get the idea. I'll also create then a method for this object because I want to retrieve all that information in a nice compact package. So we'll have one called, we'll have a method called info, which is a function. This method creates a local variable of full person info. And it's made up of this first name. It's going to be a string, so we're doing a little concatenation. First name, space, last name. I'm going to say what their age is and what band they're from. And we'll wrap it up as a, an actual sentence. So that's building a string based on all of the pieces of information, which we then return. Full person info. Whenever we run that method. So to give this uh, a test run, var example person equals new instance of band member with last name Campos, first name Victor. I'm not going to use the random number at this point here. Um, no, I, let's say we could. Uh, so all ages, uh, I don't know, the second item. and a band uh, Victor's crooners. All right, so then to see that result, console.log and example person.info method. So my console shows Victor Campos is 21 years old from Victor's crooners. Refreshing that because it'll create a brand new random number. Victor Campos is 23 years old from Victor's Crooners. All right, so that's working. My constructor allows me to quickly construct a new person. But we've got an array full of names, ages, bands, and all of that. We want to use those elements to create the band members. This is where another for loop will come into play because I want to do things several times. For loops are great to create something multiple times because if you create the right algorithm the computer will just iterate over and over and over and be a good computer very basically. So for loop this is our syntax var we can reuse the var of i again because it's a local variable. You can use a different 
value i is traditional for index and then after that we can use j k l etc but i should be fine to reuse here it's a local variable it's destroyed when we no longer need it that will once again loop a certain number of times pretty much same as before i as long as it is less than all names len so as for as many names as we have do the following and then increment automatically step through so that I eventually uh, reaches the all names len the total number of names local variable variable called original band name temp these are temporary uh, object because we are creating a new band member based on all last names an item from the array I've got three names to choose from I want the first item of the array that would be zero but we're gonna use I because you see we have the variable of I that is set to zero and we can use I anywhere inside the for loop so we'll borrow I which means zero at the moment and so here we're saying choose the zeroth item from the all last names array we'll do the same thing now for all first names array I want the I value which is zero then I want you should see where I'm going with this all ages I because that's set to zero and then finally all bands so this created something called original band name temp with this band member which should be Jimi Hendrix Jimi Hendrix experience X age with that variable I then want to put it into the array of original band member that empty array on line 31 so original band member dot push add this item to the array just like I was inventing those random numbers and pushing them into the all ages array in line 28 so we're pushing original band name temp in there what I also want to do is display that name on screen so we have L show original names we have that object and we will change the inner HTML property so we can write some HTML code in that div quickly set that equal to quotes end of statement and we're gonna build a string here so actually we're gonna take whatever currently exists in that div and add to it if I simply set it to equal it will take whatever's there in that div dump it out and put a new instance of this band member I don't want to do that I want to show all three band members so I'm gonna to add to the div placeholder so that's plus equals that means add to whatever exists in that element add a little bit more HTML what I'm adding is a paragraph plus original band member I so it'll be the zero with item dot info method we've seen that the dot info method uh, creates that string about the person's first name last name age and band writes it into a nice um, readable string so we're invoking that method of that object and then we need to close up that paragraph so let's test this out on screen we should then have all the band members visible So there we go Jimi Hendrix is 18 years old from the Jimi Hendrix experience Kurt Cobain is 18 from Nirvana and Joey Ramone is 18 
it looks like we got the random number of 18 every single time so let me refresh this it should be random numbers every time 22 20 23 21 23 again we've got sort of a narrow range of ages here so we can widen that range of ages by changing our random number generator right here so between the minimum of 18 and the maximum of 18 plus 7 alright and so if I wanted to add a brand new band member no need for me then to add an age because I've got my random age generator based on the length of my array so all I need to do is add those three pieces of data and it will then calculate it for me and display it on screen so next comes the part where we need to mix up all the first names last names ages and bands to create a brand new super band person the way I want to do this is that I want to click a button to randomize the names so every time a button is clicked randomize all the names so let's back up let's create a button we haven't talked about it yet and the book isn't gonna get to it just yet until chapter 5 but let's set up a way for us to have a button that will trigger our code right now the code runs automatically from start to finish let's activate a button so let's say before the div that displays the the new band members I'll create a button and there's a super secret uh, bit of code to create a button called button and so what that button tag does is creates a button So it's button slash button. We need an ID so that we can reference it via JavaScript. So ID, we'll call this BTN randomize. Now that it has an ID, I can access it via JavaScript once I create an object in JavaScript. So we'll be able to use that button once we set up an event handler what happens in the event of clicking the button so this will be a little bit different syntax than we've been used to but reminiscent document dot get element by ID which one we're talking about BTN randomize we will then access the on click property of that object we're not turning it into an object as we've seen before this is sort of just uh, flying by the seat of our pants to make it an actively listening element if there is a click we will run a a function expression here once there's a click run a function well we want a named function so that we can uh, do this multiple times not just one time we will run a function known as generate names and right afterward we will define what generate names means just to make sure it's working so far I'll create a simple alert clicked we have a button we click the button we get a pop-up every time we click the button we get a pop-up so we've seen function in the instance of creating uh, a constructor for an object and we also very commonly use functions for creating sort of like a series of steps a bundled group of JavaScript commands the difference is the capitalization technically capitalization doesn't matter but the convention is that capital letters when we define a function mean it's an object constructor 
and no capitalization at the beginning of the function name is a series of steps. So we have a button that does something once we click on it. And what we need to do is a bunch of little steps in order to randomize the contents of these arrays. All last names, all first names, all bands, all ages. What we want to do, let's reason this out. We want to pick a random first name and last name, but we don't want there to be two Joey's. We don't want Joey Cobain and Joey Hendrix. We only want Joey Cobain and Shirley Hendrix. We don't want to reuse first names and last names. We want to use them once and only once. So we need to use a last name and first name combination and then remove the possibility from us using it again. Basically, remove it from the array so that we don't use it again. Well, if we do remove elements from that array, they're no longer there, and therefore if we want to randomize again, we have nothing in the array because we've removed elements from the array. So what we're going to do is make copies of the existent arrays, and these copies of the arrays we will, we will at will remove elements from the array, leaving alone the original arrays. So we will create some variables inside of this generate names function and call them temp all last names. So I'm going to create temporary versions. Temp all last names. And these are made from all last names. The trick here is I cannot simply say make an array based on that array. If I wrote this code, this would just be a variable pointing to the original array. I need to actually make a copy of the array that is independent. So we use the slice method of arrays. Slice, I don't know why they called it that, but slice method lets us make a copy of an array. We need to say in the parentheses, starting from what point of the array, what index? Well, index 0. Let's make a copy from the very first item of the array and put that into temp all last names. We need to do that for temp all first names. So that's populated from all first names. We have to slice that starting from the zeroth index. Next make a temp all bands and that comes from all bands slice And finally, temp all ages comes from all ages. And one more. Temp all last names len. I want to store the length of that. That's going to be very useful, which is based on temp all last names dot length. That's going to be useful because, again, I'm going to uh, create multiple items at once over and over. So we're going to do something four times, but then we're going to do it three times because we're going to remove an item from the array, then two times, then one time, then zero times. So we need to know how many times to do it based on that array length. All right, so that creates copies of arrays based on those arrays we've already created at the top. Now recall that we've also got original band member which stores instances of the original and correct ordered names and then we've got an array random band member. Now this one is currently empty and we want to populate it with randomly mixed up first names and last names and so forth. But what can happen is that as we randomize those names and add them to the array, we're going to add our first group of four names. If we randomize again, we will add four more random names and then we will add four more to that. So we will have 12 names in that array even though I only want 
four random names from the four possibilities. So that means we need to reset our array back to empty before populating the array with the random names. So in our generate names function, we will say, let's clear that array, whatever may be in it, for the moment, let's clear it, and then we'll start to populate it with random names. As for the div on screen, I also have to clear it before adding four. Or else I would get four items in the div, and then four more, then four more, then four more. I just want empty div, add four names. Empty the div, add four names. Empty the div, add four names. So L show new names dot inner HTML set to an empty string. Clear the array, clear the div, and then let's make up some new names and show them on screen. So here's another for loop. We need to do something a certain number of times. Var i starting at 0 until i is no longer less than the total number of copied names in the array temp all last names len i plus plus we need to pick a random first name random last name random age random band so four random numbers var random last number random last num that is made from a math random object up to temp all last names length all of that we need to round and this time we need to round it down to include the possible zero width item of the array. If we let it round up or down, we may never get to zero, so we won't choose the first item of the array. We need a random first number. And we know that this is going to be rounded down. Random number. up to temp all first names length random band number and random age number so now we have a bunch of random numbers to work with based on the four arrays of data that we have. We will then create a random band name temp. This is going to be an object of the random band member. So it's a new instance of band member. And this is based on all these random numbers we're generating. So we need one of the possible last names from our temp all last names array. Specifically the random last num. Whatever random number we've generated based on that array, give me that last name. Then we need the first name. Temp all first names. Give me the index number random first num. Next is the age, so we have temp all ages array with the random age num index and temp all bands random band num.
So this statement will create a, a brand new random band member based on the four arrays of data. Well, as I said, I don't want to reuse the same last name or first name or age or band. I don't want there to be Joey Cobain from Nirvana and Shirley Ramon from Nirvana. I want each one used only once. So we have another array method to remove an item from the array. We've got dot push to add an item to the array. And we have dot splice to remove an item from the array. Yes, it's a little confusing. Dot slice is to make a copy of an array, and dot splice is to remove an item from the array. It works like this. First, we'll start with temp all last names dot splice. This method takes two arguments. From which index are we removing the item of the array and how many subsequent items are we removing from the array? We're dealing with random last num, whatever that random number happens to be. Let's remove that item from this array and only this one item. If that was a higher number, we would remove that item plus three more. Or, you know, two more to, to the right. So just this one item. And I would do the same thing for temp all first names. I want to splice something out of the array. In this case, random first num and only that one item. Temp all ages splice random age num one so we see here that sometimes it's a little bit of tedium that we have to type the same thing over several times but once we figured out the algorithm the technique for success then it's just a matter of reusing our technique and it'll save us time in the future. The first time, the first go round might be a little bit of a setup, but then once we figured it out, it should work really well. Well, we're creating those names, those random names, based on the items of the array. We have an array to hold the random band member, which was random band member. To this array we will push the random band name temp. This object will put it into that new array, which back on line 63 was emptied. Then we'll add the name, but because we're currently in this for loop, we add all instances of the new names to that array, and then we're done. We're done adding them to the array, but to display them on screen, we have a div show new l show new names. We have that div waiting for us. We will set its inner HTML to some bit of HTML code here, same as before. We can create a p tag to then display random band member, whatever index we currently are because we're inside of this for loop, dot info method. We're reusing the same info method from our original constructor. And that's the whole point of these constructors, so that we may reuse the code easily. We're inventing our own code. Finish the paragraph. So I'm going to save that. I'll go over to my browser. Give it a refresh. So it's creating random ages. And then I'll press the button. 
I get an error, but let's figure that out. Errors are good. I make it seem so easy sometimes. But let's figure out this error, because this probably happens to you as well. So let's see here. Uncaught type error. All ages is not a function. Go look on line 60. Let's see. What did I miss? Line 60. Oops, I mistyped here. I needed all ages dot slice index zero. Okay, so notice it processed the JavaScript up to that point, found an error, and stopped and did nothing more. That's the nature of JavaScript. It stops, hopefully, at the point of failure and then uh, helps you figure it out. All right, let's try that again. I'm going to refresh that. So I didn't get an error before when I refreshed it because that generate names function had not executed. Generate names execute executes once I press the button. Therefore, it looked like I didn't have any errors, but not all of the code had executed when I refreshed. Let's ref let's click the button. All right, so I get one new random band member. Shirley Hendricks is 22 years old from Ramones. Shirley Cobain is 25 years old from Ramones. Kurt Cobain is 19 years old from Ramones. Jimmy Cobain is 25 from Nirvana, and so forth. It's just random, random, random. Uh, I want to display all possible random people here, not just one at a time. Just like up here, I want to display all four of these band members. Well, we forgot one thing right here, line 81. Equals means uh, take whatever is in that element, dump it, and replace it with what's on the right. No, I want to add to it, so that's a plus equals. All right, let's try it again. Let me get some good random ages here. Randomize. There we go. Shirley Cobain is 20 from Garbage. Kurt Ramone is 23 from Ramones. Jimi Hendrix is 25 from the Jimi Hendrix Experience. That's funny. And Joey Manson is 21 years old from Nirvana. Randomize that a couple times. Kurt Hendricks is 23 from Ramones. Joey Ramone is 25 from the Jimi Hendrix Experience. Jimmy Manson is 21 years old from Garbage. And Shirley Cobain is 20 years old from Nirvana. Because we've got our code set up, our algorithm is running, all we need to do to add more content on screen is add more items to the arrays. So let's say another person. We've added new data to create a new person. So our algorithm works. We simply refresh. It lists the original new band member and then randomized. We have Courtney Manson is 25 years old from Jimi Hendrix Experience. We have Courtney Manson is 19 years old from Hole. We have Courtney Hendrix is 24 years old from Ramones. So there we go. We have started to work with loops, which are very useful in many instances. Let's give ourselves some comments, and we'll wrap up the project. Line 13. This is HTML, so we need the HTML comment. Div placeholder for the original band names line uh, 16 div placeholder for the mixed up random band names right above that this is our first exposure to a button to trigger an action. Line 18. This is our iffy, immediately evoked function expression. This is just the way we're going to do it. And then strict mode next to that, of course. Line 21. 
uh, we're creating various arrays. So we'll say array for last names. I could then say array for first names, bands, etc. That makes sense. Uh, you can do that if you want, but then I'm going to say for line 24, it might not be obvious at first glance, empty array to eventually hold random ages. And then line 25, var that holds the total number of items in the last name array. Then we start a for loop. Loop from 0 to the total number of last names. Create random numbers from 18 to 26. If that's confusing, remember, uh, random number could be a 0, so 0 plus 18. So we're always going to be at least at 18. The maximum random number could be 8. So 8 plus 18 is 26. So we've created a range of random numbers between 18 and 26. If we wanted uh, random numbers between 17 and 25, well then I would say that the minimum is 17. And then 17 plus 8 will be 25. So create random numbers from 17 to 25. Line 29, add the random numbers to the array. Here, create an empty array for all original band names. Create an empty array for new random band names create object to display original band names on screen create object to display random or to display new band names on screen constructor function with four parameters. So I'll say here these are our object properties, object methods. We only have one method. We can have multiple methods, but we've only got one at the moment. Specifically what this does is build a string based on the object properties return the value we have another loop loop from 0 to total number of last names so this is based on the previous loop but it does something different create a new band member object add band member object to array display band member on screen event handler for a for the button press. We'll get much more into detail about what this does and how useful it is on the next chapters. Function definition. Create copies of the original arrays. Clear the array 
of new band members. So we don't get way too many. Clear the div on screen so we don't get way too many. Here's another loop. Loop from 0 to total number of copied last names. Generate random numbers for each of the ar copied arrays. Each of the copied arrays. Line 74 is pretty long, so I'll write it up over here. New band members based on copied arrays and a random item from the array. Remove the current random item from the copy of the array so we don't reuse it. Add the new band member to the array. Display new band member on screen. So we have these five band members and their info and then we generate random ones. I'm just checking that I didn't mess up my code, but it works. There we go. So this is the basic concept of chapter four to make loops, conditional statements. There are still many cool things we can do with this type of construct. There's the for loop, the while loop, switch loop, etc. But based on this practice, you'll have a homework assignment, and it's going to be due a week later on October 3rd. So go find that on Blackboard. This has been Victor Campos. See you on the next lesson.